Here in Canada, opposition has been growing to the federal carbon tax, which went up today from $65 a ton to $80. So how does that translate to you? Well, gasoline has gone up 3.3 cents a liter, but will a federal rebate help Canadians? We'll be breaking that down tonight. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had some strong words from premiers who have been voicing their concerns over this federal tax. So all those premiers that are busy complaining about the price on pollution, but not putting forward a concrete alternative that they think would be better for their communities, are just playing politics. Ontario Premier Doug Ford, who has chosen not to implement its own carbon pricing system, has been vocal about his disdain for the Liberals' policy. It's a terrible tax. Everyone knows it. Everywhere I go, uh, they, they know they're getting gouged. But it isn't just Ford. Premiers across Canada have voiced their opposition, and that includes the lone Liberal left. Newfoundland and Labrador Premier Andrew Fury, who penned a letter to Trudeau calling for an emergency meeting. Trudeau hasn't acknowledged it. Politicians saying the affordability crisis plaguing Canadians is reason enough not to increase it further. Canadians were loud and clear in opposition to this carbon tax hike. A Leger poll that we commissioned showed that about 7 in 10 Canadians oppose the carbon tax hike. And it also showed that large majorities in every province and every demographic opposed Trudeau's carbon tax hike. Franco Terrazano is the federal director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and believes the carbon tax should be scrapped. And so do the hundreds of angry people who slowed down traffic on the Trans-Canada Highway west of Calgary today. So it makes it more expensive for you to fuel up your car, to heat your home and to buy food. And the parliamentary budget officer is the government's own independent nonpartisan budget watchdog. And the PBO shows that the carbon tax will cost the average family in Ontario $627 more than what they're getting back in rebates. Trudeau is saying the federal rebate applies to eight out of 10 families and ranges from $760 to nearly $1,800 per year, depending on where the recipient lives. So we're both fighting climate change in one of the most efficient ways possible possible and putting more money back in people's pockets with checks that arrive four times a year. The next Canada carbon rebate check is arriving on April 15th. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev, who is riding high over the Liberals in public opinion polls, has challenged Trudeau to make the next federal vote a carbon tax election. With a very clear choice between Trudeau, a costly coalition of Trudeau and the NDP, who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives. Carbon pricing is set to increase each year until 2030. Well, let's dive in here. Chris Reagan is an associate professor and the founding director of McGill University's Max Bell School of Public Policy and joins us tonight from Montreal. Chris, a number of premiers have been encouraging the feds to either pause the tax or eliminate it altogether. What's your take on this? Well, look, I think the carbon tax policy, and there's a, a few pieces to it, has simply become a, uh, an enormous political football. And, uh, you know, the, the opponents, political and otherwise, the opponents of carbon pricing have just decided they hate it, they want to see it gone. And the federal government is absolutely committed to doing something serious to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And they have decided, and I think for good reason, that the carbon price is the lowest cost and the best way to do it. And so uh, today, the carbon, the federal carbon price increased from 65 to $80 per ton, which means an additional 3.3 cents on a price of a litre of gasoline uh, and an equivalent increase for natural gas and for diesel and for propane and other things. Um, I think this is actually a very good policy. I don't think it has been well communicated. I think the federal government really didn't do a good job, hasn't done a good job in terms of explaining why the policy is necessary, how it works, why it makes sense to have a tax and a rebate. Uh, a lot of people think that's just crazy. But I think the, the opponents to the carbon price uh, have also, frankly, been dishonest on a lot of things. You know, they talk about the carbon price, but they never talk about the rebates. Um, they, they talk about getting rid of the carbon price, but they don't offer up an alternative. Uh, and it's interesting that last week, Scott Moe, who is a very staunch opponent to the carbon price, uh, said 
you know, in a newspaper article, well, we actually in Saskatchewan, we looked at the alternatives and they all ended up being more costly than the carbon price. Well, that's rather a key point. And the reason why 400 or more now economists across the country have signed on to this letter addressing the criticisms of a carbon price. Uh, the reason why economists like carbon pricing is because it is the low cost way. It's not just a randomly chosen way to reduce emissions. It's the lowest cost way to do it. And, you know, we economists are pretty geeky people. We like things that are low cost. And that's what it's all about. There is a political argument that it's driving up the cost of everything, obviously gas, but food costs as well. Some politicians have filmed themselves inside grocery stores where they blame the carbon tax for driving up the cost of groceries. But is that true? I trust the Bank of Canada for a lot of things. When they dig into the data, they're pretty good at digging into the data. But even if you don't trust the Bank of Canada, you could look at research from Trevor Toome and Jennifer Winter at University of Calgary. They found the same thing, that the, you know, that the impact of the carbon price on the overall cost of living was, was not zero, but it was negligible. And, and, and by the way, even if there were a bigger impact, then you got to come back to the rebates because the whole logic of the rebates is to make sure that at least the vast majority of households, something like 80% of the households in any province where this carbon price applies, um, that their overall purchasing power won't be challenged. Right, So you face higher prices for these carbon intensive things, but then you get this rebate that restores your overall purchasing power. And so what do you do? Well, if you wanted to spend the rebate all on gasoline, I guess you could, in which case it would undermine the carbon price. But most normal people aren't going to do that. They're going to spend it on groceries. They're going to spend it on, you know, they're going to save a little bit. They're going to go out to a movie. They're going to, you know, they're going to spend it on a wide variety of things. Um, but their overall purchasing power is maintained by those rebates. So it's simply just untrue to claim that the carbon price is responsible for, you know, the rising cost of living. That's just wrong. And finally, Chris, if we can trust polling, if the latest polls are correct, we could very well have a conservative government after the next election. Do you believe that this policy will be scrapped? And what will be done to fight climate change if Pierre Polyev is our next prime minister? We are now roughly 18 months before the next election. So I anticipate hearing nothing of detail from Mr. Polyev until, you know, that election campaign. And maybe even then he will kind of slide through with vague promises. Um, but I actually think that if he is going to say, well, we need to get rid of the carbon price, and I certainly believe his promise to get rid of it, um, what's he going to replace it with? Uh, is he going to replace it with a Joe Biden style interventionist, heavily interventionist set of subsidies and regulations? I, that's, a, that's not a very conservative thing in my view, but if he wants to do that, fine. Um, but boy, that'll be very expensive. So uh, what is he going to do? Uh, and, and my fear, I suppose, is that he'll get rid of the carbon price and then do nothing in its place because maybe he doesn't really care about the problem of climate change at all. And I have never heard him say that he takes climate change seriously. I have certainly never heard him introduce policies that suggest he takes climate change seriously. Now, climate change isn't the only challenge we face. There's lots of challenges we face, but um, you know, it's one of the top ones. So it seems to me that if you are a serious person and you, you know, are really offering yourself as a serious candidate for prime minister, you might want to have a serious policy on climate change. And as far as I can tell, he doesn't have one. Chris, thank you for joining us tonight on Trending Now. Thanks for having me.